What's up guys, it's Catherine from Ready Set ABA and today I wanted to do a quick video on measurement. Okay, so really breaking down the difference between continuous and discontinuous measurement procedures. Well, first of all, the two terms kind of explain themselves, but they can get a little bit tricky when we're trying to pick a measurement. For continuous measurement procedures, these are data collection methods that we're going to use for every single instance that the behavior happens. So every single time the kid hits or kicks or bites, every single time it happens, we're going to mark it down. Okay, discontinuous measurement procedures are broken down into intervals so that we don't have to continuously monitor the behavior, but whether or not it happens, or if it does happen the whole time. Sometimes in that moment in time, we may look up just to see if it's happening. So those are the main key differences between the two. Now with frequency, it's the number of times over the time. So for example, four times in an hour. Duration is the length of time. So you start a timer, you observe the behavior for happening. As soon as it stops, you stop the timer. It's important to have clear operational definitions for any of these measurement procedures. With duration, you may have to describe the onset and offset of the behavior to make sure your time and duration is accurate. Latency is the time from the demand to the behavior. So this may be important to use for toilet training to see from the time you sit them on the toilet to the time that they void, how long does it take them? This may be important data for you to have. Discontinuous measurement procedures, so partial interval is, does the behavior happen for part of the time? It's used oftentimes for behaviors that you want to decrease. Now, not always, but a lot of times you'll see, and in real life application, it's for behaviors that you want to decrease. Does it happen for part of the interval? Whole interval is oftentimes for behaviors that you want to increase or things that really happen the whole time. Okay, so seated behavior, on task, things like that. Momentary time sampling is on the interval. When the timer goes off, you look up in that moment in time and see if it's happening or not. So it's important to know when you would choose one measurement over the other. One of the key features is how frequently does this behavior happen? So some questions you want to ask yourself when choosing a continuous or discontinuous measurement procedure are, how much does the behavior occur? Does it occur at high rates? Does it occur 100 times a day? If so, you're, you're, you're going to possibly yield inaccurate results or inaccurate data if you're using frequency because the chances of me counting 100 and you counting 100 are going to be low. So if it happens a lot, you want to consider a discontinuous measurement. If you have limited resources, so even if the best measurement might be frequency, if it's a classroom full of 30 kids and you're expecting the teacher to take this data, we may want to consider a discontinuous measurement procedure as well. Another thing to consider is going to be with the type of behavior. How does it look? Is it discrete? Does it have a clear beginning and end? If it does have a clear beginning and end, most likely you could use a continuous measurement type. If it doesn't, if it's more fluid, like humming behavior, flapping behavior, even seated, something that doesn't really have a clear start and finish, then you may want to pick a discontinuous measurement procedure. So I hope that helped give you a brief introduction to measurement. Please subscribe below to the rest of the videos on my channel and be on the lookout for more terms to come.